Hi everybody, it's Miss Biggs. Today we're going to be talking about um, part of episode five of the Collog. Now you should already be a few minutes into our episode and I gave you a time when you should go ahead and stop and this is when you're watching it. So good job. Excellent job following directions. Um, and we're going to use two pieces of paper. Uh, these digitally are available to you um, when it's learning. I've printed them out to make my life easier, but since I've printed them, you don't have to. Um, it's the call law from January 13th, 19, 30, 1999, important for us. And then this is a map of their town. Um, and we're going to be using this map about cell towers to figure out this call log. Now let's talk about what happens in this call log. So much like how in your phone, the most recent call is like nearest the top and you look at your like recent history. So the oldest time's at the bottom. So the 1201 AM is the very first call of that morning. And so it was our first call. It tells us who they called, the time, how long the call lasted. And this is the interesting part that Sarah's really focusing, Sarah Koenig's focusing on in her episode. It's the cell site. So with cell towers, um, you need cell tower signal to make a phone call. We've all been stuck somewhere where we can't make a phone call. Um, and so if you're not near a cell tower, it's really hard to. But here's the interesting thing about cell towers is you can uh, tell, for the most part, about where a person was calling based on what side they were calling from. Um, and there are three sides, side A, B, and C. So I'm jotting this down so we have it in writing. So this isn't going to be like a perfect science, but generally side A is like north or northeast of that tower. Side B is the south slash southeast side. And for the most part, C is the west side of that cell tower. So, so this is my map. Um, and this is what I'm kind of drawing for our cell tower. Um, now, you know, obviously I'll say this thing, all teachers say I'm no artist, but we're going to be okay. So really, I know that the south, like the east side is divided into like the northeast and the southeast. So I'll kind of do like that kind of number. And for the most part, this is sector A. For the most part, this is sector B. For the most part, this is sector C. So like for the cell tower right here, like L688, if it said on the call log, oh, you can't see that, boom. Okay, we'll do it, well, we'll do it for this one, L655. Um, if we had one for L655, and let's say it was L655B, using my little key, I know that the call coming from L655B, they'd have to be somewhere over here yeah, um, all of the ones that look like this are cell towers and all of these pinpoints are like important parts of our story. So I'm kind of confusing um, seeing it in black and white, but I have faith in you guys. So we're gonna practice using the first call of that morning at 12.01 a.m. Add on, or whoever had add on cell phone, called hey at 12.01 a.m. It was only two seconds. And the cell tower was L602C. Now, I know it's like kind of hard to figure out where it is in the map. And you do kind of have to play like, you know, where's Waldo with them. But here I found L602 right there. Boom. And since I'm going to use my little handy chart I've made, L602C has to kind of be somewhere over here. So I'm just going to drop a little pinpoint for myself. And I'm going to note this is 1201 a.m. So roughly around 12 a.m. Adam was over here with the cell phone. That makes sense so far. So I'm going to say somewhere in Baltimore from our location because I like to keep track of the locations on the side. And I'll even just say near Baltimore because, you know, it's thereabouts. So then we waited a little while, called Hey again at 12.35. It was one minute and 24 seconds long. 
and this was from tower L654A. So let's look at our map. L654 is right here. There you go, boom, L654. And since it's A, I know it has to be somewhere up in this quadrant. And this is where you kind of have to imagine like where would Adnan B slash B or where thereabouts based on like what we have from our chart for A being like roughly this, he's probably at Jen's house. So I'll drop like a little pin dot. I'll say 1235 AM. And then on my chart, I'm going to write Jen's house. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. And now I'm gonna kind of give us some fast forward magic. And when you chart all of the times, it would look something like this. I've kind of like, it's kind of color coded and spoiler alert, this isn't mine. That's why you can read it actually. Um, this was a former student of mine's, Neha, and she did a great job. And so she had hers color coded by which cell tower it came from. So even like when there were a lot of them, um, she could still keep track of which cell tower it came from, which I really liked. And here, is what her chart looks like. And so I know this is kind of confusing. This is really what you will have to help you. So there's the fact that she traced it and she has it's near Baltimore, Jen's house, then around Woodlawn High School. And you'll see the tower L651 is a very important tower for us. It's mentioned a bunch. It's all of the pink ones on this list. Boop, boop. And all the pink ones up here. Um, and that's because it has the Woodlawn High School at it. It's got Best Buy. It's got the park and ride kind of in its area. So it's a very important cell tower for us. So on the side, Nay has left for us like the locations of where they were at these times based on these cell towers. So Sarah Koenig and her assistant are getting ready to walk through the cell tower times and locations based on Jay's testimony. Because if you remember, during Jay's testimony, they brought this out and they would like slap up a sticky note and say, oh, well, Jay said that this happened and boom, they were here. Oh, Jay said that this is when this happened and look, boom, they are at Best Buy. Like whatever it needed to be. So again, this isn't an exact science, but let's be honest, it's a pretty decent-ish indication based on the fact that we have the A, B, and C sides. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, it looks like this. I'll probably upload this copy and this copy to its learning just to help us out. So if you need any help, it'll be there. If you want to make your own and chart it, great. You could chart it digitally. You could do it by hand, up to you. Or you could just look at this one on your computer and that'd be fine. But I promise you, looking at this will probably be really helpful when you're understanding what Sarah Koenig is saying in the next big part of um, our podcast. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Bye.